Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Tonight we have episode two uh, with Giles Kai, Jessica Ford, Lacey Terrell, Helen Sloan and um, Rolf Kono. We've got an international cast, as I was saying, uh, episode one. So we've got Europe, Ireland, um, USA, Australia. We've got it all. So sit back and enjoy the stories and enjoy the photos. All right. So, right. Up next, we've got, uh, oh, Rolfie, Rolf Kono. You're up, buddy. Then you can go to sleep. <laughs> oh, ah. come on, ah. Mr. European portrait photographer. <laughs> oh, my that, that, gosh. That, that, that from, Gorgeous. Uh, the ha Hamlet, Hamlet, Kate Winslet. Um, I, I work as a still photographer on, on Hamlet. And uh, this is the gallery shot. Yeah. It's such a wonderful. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. Painterly. Yeah. yeah. Shot on on, um, on Pinewood, no, on 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 Shepperton, Shepperton, Shepperton. Yeah, it was an amazing, amazing film to work on. And uh, oh, you 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 other guys are so good at telling stories. So you have to ask me a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the lighting here is just sensational, and it's it's. I mean, it's it's it's. Yeah, tell it's, us. It's it's uh, I mean it's, it's set up with with, with flash flashlights you know on 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 the set you know uh, with, with a gray background you know and I mean she has I mean so so much comes out of her so it's uh, it, it, it it it's not very uh, it's it's easy to do photos with with girls like like her I mean she was such amazing and also on 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 the film. When we shot Hamlet, I mean, great, really, really wonderful. Yeah. She, um, I oh, look at the eyes. I mean, she's there's just so much emotion. And I mean, this is like a grand master in a gallery. I mean, what a beautiful it, painting it would be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so painterly. Yeah, I was, I was really, I was uh, really happy when I saw what I've done. You know? what, what camera are we, <laughs> are we using, Rolf? At, at that time, I, I it was the film days. It was uh, Hasselblad, I think. Mm -hmm. Hasselblad, yeah. I mean, when I I, I am um, on January first. No, on on December first, I worked fifty years in the film business. Wow. And, and uh, wow. when I, start, when I st I'm seventy three. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm seventy three years old now, and uh, I started. You look, you look good, mate. <laughs> And I, st I started with uh, shooting with uh, Hasselblad and Royal Flex, and at that time there was no blimps, so it was uh, very often we had to set up the photos afterwards uh, on, on films. Not on Hamlet. On Hamlet, I had I had a blimp, but when I started in Denmark on my first films, uh, direct I, I had to ask the director, "Can I get a, Can I get a shot here?" And he set up the and he set up the axis, and he had a word. He said, "Hup." And then when he said, Hup, I should take the photo. That was the way I started. <laughs> and, no uh, way. And then, and then I, I, I found out in Hollywood that they had a blimp uh, and I got in touch with uh, Irving Jacobson. That was Mark Jacobson's father. Oh, wow. And, uh, oh. and I got my first blimps. And from then on, the, the, the director doesn't have, didn't have to say Hup anymore. I could do all my own. But I also... <laughs> prefer to do photos where i mean when people are in action it's much better than all these setups you know i hate setups <laughs> but i mean the, this is this is a, a like a gallery shot so i mean that's perfect that's that's perfect so what's Rocky, the next i'm in awe of you oh Sorry? my god that is i'm in awe of you i mean back to you know like i think all of us here only remember mark um but to go back to you know his dad at, at Jacobson and you yeah. know there's and you're in yeah. your 70s well, I was having this conversation with um I can't remember who it was oh with a sports photographer yesterday Delhi Carr about longativity of photographers and you know I mean we we were actually really lucky there's many photographers 
that are sailing into their 60s and 70s that are, that are still doing their their greatest work and it's it's um you make me very happy <laughs> oh, oh look at that That's <laughs> there you go it's, like, oh. it's my favorite kind of lighting oh stunning oh uh, uh, I, think, I oh, love mine still. Oh my gosh, that's the original too, oh. without a flat screen. Uh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. You guys, I still have my same blimp. That Me I too. From film. But I, I yeah, also it, have it has my fit all my cameras. But but I, I, I does anybody any of you use the blimp still? Me. Yep. Me. Occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've just realized about six months ago. When it's raining, absolutely cats and dogs, or there's mud being thrown at me. Um, swords. While we're filming, of course. But, uh, oh, yeah. Swords. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great protection. Um, I love yeah. my blimp. Yeah, I love but, uh, especially for action. I also, now, now I really love my, my Sony cameras. You know, it's, I mean, you can be ev everywhere and you can shoot and and the autofocus is amazing. And um, I, I, I started with uh, Nikon. I've been through Canon, and now I'm a Sony man. <laughs> oh wow! Really? Same here. That's cool. So, so this, oh. this was taken with the, the, the bright, bright looks camera, panoramic camera, oh. uh, with Mila Jurovic on the Resident Evil. Uh, and I, I wish I didn't sell that camera. I, I, I. I think I'm going to buy a wide looks again because it's uh, the behind the scene with a wide looks is fantastic. With the panoramic yeah. or yeah. one of these. What is that? What's that? Oh, what's that one? Hasselblad. Oh, the Hasselblad. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the X. X pan. Yeah. Yeah. X pan. Yeah. This or is the Mark One. This is the Mark One. The paint literally came off as soon as I got it. It's <laughs> but apart from that, it's a beautiful camera. And do you still use it? Do you still use it? Occasionally, it came out on um, uh, Men in Black when we were out in the desert. I thought it was a perfect opportunity, so I was shooting out in the desert. But yeah. it's, it's the cost for processing and things like that, so studios are a little bit, Woo! So, yeah. yeah. But it's a beautiful bit of kit, and it weighs a ton. Yeah. <laughs> and it's worth I love a heavy camera. camera. When, when I purchased it, so. Uh, oh, so, really? Yeah, they, they really <laughs> hold their value. I, 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 do, I, do my, I do my own uh, grading of photos. I, that's, that's the way it is in Denmark because we don't have studios uh, like, like in Hollywood where, where there, there's uh, places where they, they grade everything. But do you do, do your own, own gradings? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do all, all mine. Sloney does, I know that. Yeah. yeah. The world knows Sloney does. Hey, yeah. that, the grip on no. the left, that's... That's a buddy of mine, Glenn. Um, this is like this is the German grips, right? From yeah, yeah, it, it, Berlin it or Munich. In, it was shot in Berlin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I know yeah. those guys. That is hilarious. Who else do I know there then? <laughs> hey, you know the, the the guy on the left, right? He was um, an Olympic gymnast on the rings. <laughs> That's amazing. The, the grip. So yeah, there you go. And he's like, his arms are like this big. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ralphie. <laughs> no, no, but no, I, no. I love it. I'm so glad that you put this in because it's such a rad shot. And, it's very cool. And to um, have the wide luck story too is very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Is oh it the gosh. wide luck? The, there's a, there was a metal one and there was a plastic one. And the, the, I. The, 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 this is the metal one. The metal one. Yeah, I I had the plastic one for about two days, and it kept jamming. So I gave yeah. up and went. To the next band. No, no, no. This was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm so gonna get one. one. So you've had the X band for a while, then. Oh, Sorry? I've had it since co since college. Yeah. Oh wow. No, uh, it's a. No way. Yeah, sentimental. So. Uh, you guys are all such real photographers. I'm terrible. I just like throw around a Nikon and that's it. That, 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 oh. That's another behind this the is, shot. That's from Denmark. Uh, that's beautiful. From, from Danish feature film. Uh, uh, working working at the same uh, the same area around right now. 
a beautiful part of Denmark. Where is it, Rolf? Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, the island of Fyn, Fyn, Fyn. Uh, that's the island where Hans Christian Andersen lived, or was born. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, it's called uh, the, the, it's called Fabor, Fabor. It's a really wonderful place. Wonderful place. What and, movie is this? Sorry, when? What, what movie is this? this is, it looks like a monk or something. But is it? What's what's going on? It, it, it's it's a Danish movie called The Green Butchers. Green Butchers. It's 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 a comedy. It's a comedy, and um, what? Luckily, they they made this shot there. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So sort of the color and just like, and that's is that on film or is it? That that that's on that that was on film. Yeah, 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 right. Wow. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, it just goes to show you got to stay around for the light or get up for the light, don't you? You can't exactly. take it for granted. Yeah, all those years of oh. shooting in transparency. Uh, that, that, that's <laughs> your heart. That, that, that was used as a the poster for the film called Pedro the Conqueror. Uh, was shot in another Danish island called Bornholm. And uh, this is Max von Sydow and uh, Pelle uh, for, from the film called Pedro the Conqueror. And uh, oh. uh, was, I mean, uh, I thought I didn't really get the shot while while they were while, while they were filming, so I asked them, "Could we put could we post this afterwards?" And they did it. And lot, I mean, it, it has been uh, the poster shot and one of the one of the photos that I've seen most of my photos. I mean, I've seen it everywhere. Yeah, it's a great shot of Max. Yeah, I. What a what a wonderful actor! Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, I also worked with him on on he, he did a he did a film where he, he directed a film in Denmark. Uh, I was lucky also to work on with him and uh, the Swedish uh, DP uh, Sven Nyqvist did it. He did the the film that uh, Max was was directing. So I mean, and every um, for for the for I, I think maybe. Ten years after that, I got Christmas card from Max every single year. Oh, wow. Such, such okay. a sweet man. Such a sweet man. And he just died like uh, half a year ago or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for them to give you so much in a setup too is, um, is I, quite extraordinary. I was just going to say, it doesn't look like a setup at all. Yeah. You believe no, no, it's no. in. Because, I mean, they are so good. I mean, I mean, the, the yeah. kid was the kid, but but Max was so easy. To, I mean, to work with. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. and that was. So cool. uh, I love the, I love the hot squashing and. It, Sorry. Inside yeah, I'm with you. It shows their um. Yeah. It shows their closeness in a relationship, hey Jess. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ralphie. Now on this next shot, I'm so I'm so glad that you put it in here because you're the only one, and everyone that doesn't work in our industry that's looking at it um, is uh, this is like I can't believe I've never thought to put a a crew photo in because this is just stellar. <laughs> I thought really really good. This is great one. It, it was uh, uh, the Three Musketeers also shot in uh, in. in in uh, Berlin, uh, I mean, and uh, I, I thought it was funny to see. I mean, all these many people, and, and and luckily I had a good first AD to help me setting up the people because I mean, of course the production wanted that shot, but also they didn't want to use so much time on it. So I mean, but we did it. We did it quite quickly, and I'm and I'm on there. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there. Uh, I don't. Know, I'm sitting there. I'm also there with, oh, the, yeah. with a okay. remote. Can you see me? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, yeah. where? On the left oh, side? Oh, yeah, yeah, on the right. On the oh, right. Yeah, yeah, on the yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with the oh, remote. Yeah, yeah. On the green. Underneath the green. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, that's a big classic. difference. So I'm, working on, I'm right now working on a film in Denmark where you have a crew of maybe 30 people or something like that. So... <laughs> It's going to be a different kind of a crew shot, I tell you. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it will be a different one. <laughs> but the thing about crease shots too is it's like it's the one thing. I, I, I mean, like I, I take quite a bit of pride in them because it's the one thing that we can give back as a thank you to everyone that have that has done so much for us during a production. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, on the last season of Thrones, I made, um, I, I made a book for the crew where I set up and lit each department uh, as if they were cast. And then we um, printed a book, the producers paid for it, and we distributed it to all the cast or all the crew. Oh. And I think it's the thing that makes me cry the most i think crew photos are so important they're so special so, down the road you know yeah and when when i shoot the the crew photo i take many photos and then i find out who uh, closes their eyes and then yeah photos. yeah totally and in photoshop i i Replace I, I blend them together because else i could i i have troubles with the people oh i'm closing my eyes yeah. oh. No, no. I do that too. I do that too. <laughs> me, too. <laughs> me too. We're all it just, shows how, it just shows how many how many hands it takes to make a movie. You know, so many people. Yeah, yeah exactly. So <laughs> many. <laughs> That's so funny, Ralph. Exactly. Oh, is that Luke Evans? Was he in that? Sorry. Was that Luke Evans down there, actor? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are they, I've got to have a look, good look through this because if this is a Berlin, I'm going to know like 20 people in this shot. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Classic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, you just clone the eyes from another frame. It's like, oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mass Miguel's the Danish accent is also there. Oh. Oh, yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's, he's wonderful. so great to work with. Yeah. I love he's it. I've got a big screen. I'm going to have a good look around this I shot agree. later. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> Ralph, that's so cool, man. And um, do you want to what's, – what's your uh, what's your insider film tips for people that are thinking of or wanting to or <laughs> well, to get I mean, in, I mean, you know? Where do you I start? Mean, but I mean, they, they, they could also go, I mean, the Danish, in Denmark, for example, the Danish film school has every year a lot of uh, school uh, pictures they have to send to, to, to make the exam and go there and, and, and help out and, and do still photos on, 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 the Dan on the film schools. I mean, it doesn't have to be the Danish film schools, but if there, there must be film schools everywhere. And that's a good, good way of starting. Uh, uh, and and even uh, you might even when uh, the young producer directors next time they're going to use a still photographer they if they like what you do they, they will use you. So that yep. that's a good way of starting. I mean, for example, I mean, could be. I would. Well, say. that's so true because you never know who that director is going to be or that no, technician no. is going to be. They could end up being a big producer, mm -hmm. a big director. They could be anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's just like the run. I mean, the people that that works on on the ground. I mean, like like runners. I mean, they, in two years they are producers. So you have to be very nice to everybody on the film set. That's very that's very true. Be user friendly. Be a good be a good guy. Yeah, exactly. Girl. Great selection, Rolf. Hey, Yen, um, thanks for making me realize that I've got a lot more to do. So um, that was really cool. Okay. Ooh. Now we've got uh, Game of Sloanes. Sloaney, you're up, mate. It's funny what you were saying about the takeaway with, with BTS. And I often think that I like my BTS better than anything else. Yeah. Um, I think that's where we have the freedom i mean i know that when we're taking stills we interpret it our own shots like everybody else said you know we find the other angle and something that they don't have and a different way to sell it but i think with bts you're just it's the one time on the set where you're just so free to tell the story in your way you know you just become like you know, we have the privilege of like, we're the documentarians of the whole thing, you know, and, and like, 
I've said to Jason before, you know, we're making a, a record of a time and a place and all these people and their lives. You know, and it all becomes the legacy of the film or the show, you know, the photographs later down the road. And I, I don't know. I mean, we're just like, we're we're kind of, you know, it is stressful and it is crazy, but we're just surrounded by 360 degrees of cool stuff all the time. And a toy shop. It's a toy shop. It really toy is. Shop. It's like art on an industrial scale. That's another one of my kind of little things that I like to describe it to people who've not been on a film set you know and I think with, for me when I, when I look back I mean all the photos I've chosen are from Thrones because that has literally consumed the last 10 years of my career you know and I'm not sad about that <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think like it, stills photographer is kind of one of the only jobs besides perhaps, I don't know, a couple of producers or a medic or something where we get to meet everyone involved on the production. We get to just roam around, you know, go into the workshops, the costume department. We get to talk to everyone, interact with everyone. And I think it's such a singular experience. I don't think any other crew member has an appearance, an experience like the stills photographer. I just think it's so much more holistic for us, you know, and that's really wonderful. Um, you know, you know, specifically with, with Thrones and, you know, I, I think so many of the shots that I took on Thrones, I took with real love. And I know that sounds a bit mushy, but, there's a real romance to a lot of the behind the scenes photos because these, these, this crew, they become your family. You know, you're just squished into this world with them for like six months, you know, and then for a show it was 10 years. And I mean, these people are my family. So I think, you know, there's a real, there's a, there's a real, I like to think there's a real romance to it and, you know, to my BTS work and, I like to shoot it as if it's its own separate little movie or TV show going on, you know, all the drama that's happening behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera. And uh, just on, on that comment about 10 years, I mean, I, d I don't think there's that many of us who get to work full time on a job for that long. It's kind of a blessing and a curse in a way because it's, you know, it's a blessing because I got 10 years of this amazing job, but I also didn't get to explore other worlds. But, you know, like I say, it's, there's plenty of time. Yeah, Absolutely. True. There is plenty of time as, as we all, yeah. As, thank you, Rolf, for cool making shot. us um, realise that. Yeah, it's a cool shot, isn't it? It's, um, it's beautiful. I love it. And um, and as Slaney knows, uh, everything I know about Game of Thrones is through her images because I'm still yet to see a me single too. episode. Yeah, me too. Um, me too. Me I too. Know. No way. So there's three of us. Is any? Yeah. That is. I've studied. Wild. I've studied the book though. The gorgeous book. Oh Thank yeah. You. Beautiful book. Thank oh, you. Yeah. It's just yeah, like I, I can always have it beside me now at all times. Mine's, mine's literally right here in front of me. Yeah. Ma <laughs> Maria's got Maria's got mine. She stole that straight away. It's like I'll have that. <laughs> oh, that's well, nice. Helen. Can I just say that if you're gonna choose to be on a project for ten years, you picked a good one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I was in, like no one knew it was going to be. Of course. You know, my brother actually had read the books and he said, oh, I love these books. It's so good. And he was suddenly kind of interested in what I do just a little bit, but he was kind of interested. And and then it was, um, you know, as time went on, we realized this is sort of a phenomenon. And it was sold to me as a quote unquote some you know some nerdy thing with like swords and dragons and stuff and that was how it was sold it wasn't sold as like they're making this epic you know and i think over those 10 years it grew organically and we grew as a crew organically and 
the strength of my work and everyone else's work grew with it. And I think it was a really, it was just, it was great how it grew up, you know, in front of our eyes. It's, it's great. I mean, if I never, if I never do another job that successful in my life, it'll be fine. It was enough. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, but it must have been fun being able to refine your work over that length of time too, you know, with such yeah. familiar subjects and, you know, worlds and that. It's, um, yeah, you know, you've um, got a lot of time to experiment, right? I was so free, you know, and, and the, the great thing about it was when I, when I joined, I joined because they like the kind of the style of my work, the hard grade you know, um, that I do on everything. And, and so they invited me in as I am. And I think that meant that from the word go, I was able to just do my style. And again, it was it's like the dream job. I'm still expecting to just like wake up and somebody to go, nope, <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> but. That's rad. Hey, but because you, you end oh, come on. I know. One of the great <laughs> action shots of all time. That's cool. You you grade all your images individually too. You don't have any recipe setups, right? Yeah, that's right. I just I kind of do it as I see it, um, just by eye for the most part. And I always say that there's probably a ton of photographers out there kind of roll their eyes when I say that because you know I'm sure there's a better way to do everything. But I think for some of us who are a bit stubborn, we just go at our own speed. You know, I certainly cannot keep up with technology. You know, when you guys are talking about rigs, I'm like, right, someone sit me down for an afternoon and just teach me because I skipped that module at some point, you know, and but it's just so hard to, to keep up with everything, you know. And so, yeah, I, I grade individually and it's worked so far. But we're in know, the same that last one of Danny. Um, I think that was the first one that kind of went, you know, viral, as they call it. And it was a different look. I don't think anything had ever looked like that. And because there was no trailer, there was no, there was nothing to sell the show apart from the photos. I think it was, it was really interesting that that, that went out and it was different, you know, and I got a lot of criticism um, for the grade from, uh, you know, people on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it was back then, but there was a lot of critique of it. You know, it doesn't look like a proper photograph, or and but it was fantasy. You know, there's not there's no rules when you shoot fantasy because it doesn't have to look like real life. You know, it's there's a, there's so, they, they've created this such a you know a rich and a richly detailed world in Game of Thrones. You know, why why would I want to shoot it to look real? You know, it's like. Yeah. I guess anyone can paint by numbers, you know, and, you know, for me, it's about, you have to record it with soul. And I think that, that, that happens on set, but it also happens afterwards when you're adjusting the look of the image, you know, you have to really be into it. You have to know the story, you know, you have to feel the story because it's not, you know, the, the, the photographs that we take are very powerful because you know, cinema and um, a movie and a TV show, is, it has the power to move people. But to get the bums in the seats, the photographs have to do the same job first. They have to move you. They have to be full of soul. They have to be full of the story, full of the moment. You know, so it deserves our utmost attention and care to kind of achieve that. So what was the question? <laughs> Yeah. You just Wait, answered it. Quick, can I have, ask a quick question? Yeah. Helen, did you, um, whether whether it was early on or any time during your seasons, did you have conversations with the directors of photography about how they, what their out end color was going to be? Yeah, I mean, it's a funny old story that because one of the VFX guys told me that when they were in the edit suite, one of my photographs was talked about as the way that they would grade it from the pilot. <laughs> because I, I, think had, I, I think I knew that, yeah. I had kind of done this hard, hard grade and, and then, the, you know, David and Dan, the showrunners and the photo department were like, yeah, that's, that's good, go with that. And I knew that the hot places were going to be a certain kind of colour and the cold places were going to be a certain kind of colour. And 
I think the grade on the show is so different to the photography, my, my photographs, but they, they serve a different purpose because if you take a screen grab from like the, there's a battle in season eight that, which I'll talk about in a while, but it was, you know, 55 nights in a row. It was so dark, so kind of full of kind of intensity and uh, danger. And it was very, very dark on screen. But of course, if I made a photograph that totally mimicked that look, you can't use that photograph. You can't sell the program with that photograph. So you're, you're not, um, I try to explain this to people and, and sometimes you'll work with a, a DOP who's a bit stubborn, you know, um, and I, there's, there's a conversation to be had where you have to say, well, I'm not going to just completely do what they've done because I have, my job is different and I have to do my job differently. And I always show the directors of photography, you know, a selection at some point you know, when it's not too late, I'll show them, you know, so if they do have an objection, we, we'll talk about that. But for the most part, especially on this show, the directors of photography have been very receptive and complimentary and mm -hmm. they understand that it's a different job. I'm not just there to copy their shots and copy their exactly. grading. Right. That's a really good so, point that you bring up about the light because quite often, you know, it is almost completely dark and... I'm like you, I'll go and um, have a little chat to the DP and I'll explain that I know that my frame is a stop to two stops brighter than what you were intending to shoot. But if I don't do it, the magazine or who, or the studio yeah. are going to do it and it's going to end up muddy and it, much safer with us guys looking after the work than, than someone right. else. I mean, as long as it's complimentary, there's no problem. It's when you try and go rogue and do something completely crazy, yeah. well, of course they can object. Yeah. That's just insulting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know, but there we are. So and then, like, this, this action shot, um, I knew I had to put in kind of one thing from each category, so I've got, like, um, like, because, you know, we, we have to be a Jack and Jill of all trades. We have to, you know, do documentary. We have to do action. We have to do portraiture. We have to do studio. We have to do kind of uh, the more humorous kind of social media type stuff. But for the action, like, I find action really challenging. I feel like I'm constantly having heart attacks. <laughs> when I do an action, especially when there's like horses, so this battle was a complete nightmare because <laughs> it was just horses everywhere. And I think, and I had my blimp. We were talking about blimps. I, de I had my blimp the whole time because, as you can see, there's all manner of shit flying through the air. Actual horse poo, probably among it. Um, so I had the blimp always. I always had the blimp and. You know, um, it's, it's like trying to do embroidery, wearing gardening gloves. It's really, you know, they're amazing, but they're just, they are what they are. <laughs> um, yeah. And so we're kind of like, we're, you know, our, our job is like, and everyone said it, it's all about building relationships of trust and being able to kind of get that access, you know, and insinuate yourself, be invisible, just be safe, be part of the kind of organism that is the crew, you know, the camera team just running through this battle, you know, so we all had to learn the dance. I think um, Lacey used that expression, you know, and it comes from, for me as well, it comes from the circus and having to learn the tricks so you know what the point is uh, that you need to photograph and like watching Kit, who's just incredible with stunts. We watched them for hours rehearsing so that we would know where we could walk, that we weren't going to be in the path of a horse, you know, and it, you know, it's totally stressful, but it's, you know, you've built these relationships, not only with the cast, but also with the, the camera operators and the boom operators, the focus pullers, you know, and um, I think, we kind of, after a certain point, your confidence allows everything to just be second nature. So you're just in there taking photographs and 
that's when you start to get the great action shots because you're not thinking about what you're doing with the camera. You're just worrying about the art of it all. You're not worrying about the dance. You're not worrying about your safety because you've rehearsed the moment. You've rehearsed the job. You know where you're at. And that's when you get great action stuff, you know. And I mean, Northern Ireland is always a challenge when it comes to the weather. It's just, I mean, we're not famous for our sunny beaches. <laughs> well, it adds to it. And, and, you know, as Kappa said, you know, if your photo's not good enough, you weren't close enough and you were close enough. <laughs> yeah, I would say. I, I find these situations really pressured, I'll be honest. You know, there's, we knew this battle was going to be epic. And, you know, with that comes this, huge demand for material you know i hbo were great they didn't give me like a list for the day or anything or the week even it was just like go and do your thing you know and i knew what they needed they knew that i would get what they needed but i mean i think maybe as i think maybe film crew are a little bit addicted to the impossible they're a little bit addicted to achieving the impossible um like i think Someone said about Game of Thrones that David and Dan had managed to gather a group of workaholic perfectionists. And yeah. when it came to when it came to our battles, I think that's what we did best, you know. And so between this and then the fifty-five night shoots of season eight, you know, that was like hellish, really, because I was going from nights also onto days. So I was kind of reading the call sheets between the two units and then kind of making my own schedule, but it was like my head was just, you know, up my bottom by the end of it, it really was. And I'm so, like Jason, you would have lost your mind with me on this battle sequence because I'm just so mean to my equipment. <laughs> oh, so, me? I'm, 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 I'm. I'm brutal with my gear. I wouldn't be, I'd be like, yeah, go Sloney. I mean, like if the gear can't keep up. Well, that's it. And nothing ever happened. Like I'm totally Nikon and everything was just covered in muck. As long as the front of the glass was clean, I was happy, you know, and then I was just chucking them in like a kit bag at the end of the day that was like, it looked like a bag of roadkill, Trevor said, and it was, <laughs> it was like full of blood and mud and some fur from one of the extras or something, but it was... You know, it's like like you say. You know, your equipment has to work for you, not the other way around. Yeah, with a boss. Yeah, Helen, Helen, do do you crop your photos afterwards? Um, only if I have to. It's like if there's something that's really bugging me, I I'll crop it. Yeah. yeah, I try not to though because then you lose the yeah yeah you know you lose the size, but. Yeah, there's a couple of times where I've there's been something in the corner that's not photoshoppable, and I've just been like, "Oh, come on, we'll just crop it." <laughs> yeah. The horse really shot, wanted though. his picture taken on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. the horses were Sorry. great. Cheers. So I, I mean, oh, I guess I put this one in because I just want, I just wanted to have one. You know, it's like Giles's jumping sheep. You know, it's just that. <laughs> We get so many of these, like, I'm not a fan of, like, wacky shots where people are kind of posing, like, uh, you know, I'm not really a fan of that. But I think there are so many difficult days on set. And when you get these little moments of kind of uncanny, you know, it's yeah. like they're so special and they're so like if you try to explain a film set to someone like I always say for a joke an average day is we set someone on fire and push them over the side of the boat so I think when you come across these little moments nobody sees them if it wasn't for the photographers you know it's right. uh, like it's like that Star Wars shot with the guy in the pink shorts I mean it's just hilarious and it's so famous <laughs> You know, and there's like, there's so many from Star Wars, so many little moments of uncanny. And of course, my I have quite a few from Thrones of all the, you know, plastic dragons and polystyrene dogs. And um, and now, of course, the headless horseman at the battle. So I love it. It's, it is. It's an absolute classic. And I'm sure he's smiling for you underneath the, the, the green mask too, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't even, to this day, I still don't know who that is. <laughs> you think it's Dan? <laughs> he ran off into the distance before I could ask who it was. So It's, it's Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. Maybe he was anyone know that, me. Warren Zevon? No. Oh, really? I'm the only Zevon fan. Wow, okay, you guys look it up. Uh, off the subject of Warren Zevon, I was just curious, how many people are there in that picture, would you say? So hard to gauge. We had hundreds. hundreds of extras in that battle. Wow. I mean, we like every day when I walk through Belfast, I meet like six of the extras from Game of Thrones. Wow. Well, I don't recognize them now because they've all shaved their beards off and cut their hair. So, right. but it's fun. Yeah, That's we have tons of extras, so many, and and they're all from Northern Ireland, which is a small place, as Jason knows. It's you know, Jason probably knows half of these guys. They were probably on Dracula. Yeah, right. That's funny. <laughs> That's amazing. There's not, you know, a movie's only as good as its background cast. That's um, right. You know, it's really quite something else. Oh. No. Awesome. Sloney. It's scary. <laughs> oh, no, this, this makes me speechless, this. Anyway, sorry. I, th I think I, I wanted to put this one in because I think when we do studio stuff, people often don't realize that we do studio work. And I was lucky enough to the posters for like almost all the posters for Game of Thrones were from my photos, apart from one in season one. <laughs> when we when I hadn't quite gained the trust of the producers to be asked to do the the posters yet and then season eight was like a major luxury because we'd like all throughout this the seasons and um, my i have a team for studio i have my assistants uh trevor and then of course d and so we'd been kind of like trevor and i on set had set up these sort of impromptu studios in like barns or cow sheds or wherever else we could find a power socket you know and we'd kind of been T stealing moments with cast to shoot gallery to shoot poster work and um, these kind of brief encounters that were so stressful because you had like five and a half minutes with Max von Sido, you know who's like Gosh. this imposing <laughs> character so you know but then in season eight uh, we had this great experience where it was there was a lot of things that happened in the last season where it seemed like everything had come together and in the last season my photo editor came over from HBO Vicky to be with us for the photo shoot um, nice. and from Bond were there we had uh, like a proper a time slot with each cast member of like 15 minutes to get the shots we had time to prep the studio it just was like this total luxury event for a stills photographer right at the end of everything and you know, it was, it's, it, you kind of, you do your studio shots and you light them and then you kind of, a lot of the time, don't know how they're going to look until you see it on a billboard or in a magazine or on a cover of something. You don't know what they're going to have done. And this one was lovely because really, they haven't really changed that much from the actual photograph on the day. I mean, they've added that big GOT thing and his, he doesn't really have glowing blue eyes. So, you know, but it's really not that different. So when we went to New York for the premiere and they had them like massive all over New York and it was just like, oh, that's just what it looked like. And it was just kind of a testament to the team being able to talk. I mean, you've you've talked so much there about working as a team and a team that really, you know, gels well together and, and the, the last photo shoots were just such ending it on such a high. You know, so well yeah, done, amazing, Helen. Sloane. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so Sloane, you have a really good take on um on advice of how to get into the industry or at least how to feel what it's like and get a portfolio together so take it away 
Well, I mean, everyone else has said, you know, well, not everyone, but a few people have said, like, get on student films, get experience, do the smaller things, build up your portfolio and, you know, spend a lot of time doing that. And I, I totally agree. And then people say, but, you know, I, I can't get action. I can't get any of that kind of work. And I think any good photo editor or good photo producer will be able to look at a photograph that wasn't necessarily taken on a film set and they'll be able to see that what you have there you can apply on a film set. So I always think for action, um, like I'm sure that we, we have them all over the world, but in Belfast we have a festival called the Festival of Fools, which is a circus festival. And there's so much action to be had there. There's like acrobats in the street, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. And I think that's a really interesting way to practice action, you know, or like car races, you know, dog races, cycle, cycle clubs. There's a whole, there's a such a range of things where you can Boxing. practice action. Uh, you know, you don't have to be on a film set, but you have to kind of rock up to the party with something that shows you can do it, you know. Like if I rocked up to Jason as a trainee and showed him just a load of really good action shots, I think he could see no matter what it was of, that it was good or, or not so good. You know, but in, in terms of um in terms of advice, I think once once people get on a film set, you know, it's like we've we've talked so much in this chat about understanding the roles and other people's roles on set and that you know our job is all about access it's all about relationships and nobody's role is more important than anyone else's on set and we're just a big giant machine with loads of cogs and you know i think some i can't remember who it was but i think it might have been um, jessica said that people show up on set thinking that they're the bee's knees and then they complain that they've been badly treated and <laughs> You know, it's just you have to go in there knowing that it's a balancing act and you have to gain everyone's trust because at the end of the day, there's, I would say, 75% of people do not like having their photograph taken. And it's our job to kind of massage that and get the confidence. But I think it's because they did not understand yeah. how the crew was working. Exactly. I, I said to Jason in our chat that I think for all freelancers, um, I think it's really important for people to know that when they come into this industry in particular, probably the same in the music industry or a few others, it's, there's no ladder. This is not a job where you climb the ladder in a way that you do in a, in a career job like a bank manager or, you know, people with, you know, science degrees leave and they, they climb a ladder, they become a, an apprentice and then they start up. And it's, that's not how it is for us. Like, you know, I've had the best 10 years of my career probably. And yet there was a while where I was thinking no one wants to hire me because I'm the Game of Thrones girl. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it, it was a funny feeling to think that you've put so much in because what you're taught at school is that if you keep putting the work in, then you, you move up, uh, you know, in this kind of like trajectory that goes like this, but it's not a, a ladder, it's a climbing frame. You're, you know, one minute you're on the top of it and the next you're down the slide on your bum in the mud. You know, <laughs> it's so great. It's great. So the sooner you get used to the climbing frame, the, the, the happier you'll be. Absolutely. Hey, team, I've had so much fun today. And poor old Rolf, I don't mean to call you old, but you, you've got to, it's like you've got to go get up early to work, right? Yeah, no problem. No problem. This has been wonderful. It's okay. Yeah, it's so, so, so good. Well, I'm glad yeah, you enjoyed it. But Jason, well, we don't see anyway. your work. I know we're just. Oh, you want to see mine? Yeah, yeah, we're we're yeah. Mine. Okay, well, I was just worried that everyone was like, you know, tired. And, uh, oh my okay. gosh. So, um, so this is Charlize Theron from Eon Flux, and um, <laughs> it's one of those shots. I don't know if you've seen the anime of Eon Flux, but she looks up and a fly. She catches a fly in her eyelashes. And so this is actually lit, you know, Stuart Dryberg, the DP, this is lit for her to be looking straight up. So the camera's, you know, down like this. And then they were making some adjustments. And so CT's leaned over and we started having a chat. And I like saw this light and I'm like, oh, hold on. And so I'm just there sitting there talking to her. And I'm like, 
And so I got like five frames off or something like that. And um, and it's actually one of my really favorite shots it was on a Nikon D1, D1X. So the quality is not that good. I wish it was, you know, with a six or an 850 or something like that now. But um, Did you I take just, the lens cap still, off when you did it? Oh, did I have the lens cap on again? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did at the time, but I had to go back and do it again because I'd forgotten. Um, no, but I just like I, I like it because it's like it's just a, to me it's a timeless sort of classic Hollywood image, and you'd never know that it was Eon Flux. You know, it's Beautiful. just like looks like a setup, and it just wasn't. It's just a chat, just two people having a chat. And oh, I did put one in. So this is one of my Mad Max. You know what we're talking about. Um, with Giles, with um, you know, you have to dress up and stuff. This was you look amazing. I don't know if you guys have, you look great. yeah, no, I look awesome. <laughs> and I was just, as you can see on my on my hand there, I'm setting off the remote so <laughs> uh, for my selfie Some stick. Remote. And um, <laughs> but um, on the back of the war rig was um uh, a half um Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, I used to hide up in there and it was like, it was great because it was, you know, I'd, I've got these other shots where it's, you know, framed with a bit of the window and stuff like that. And what we're talking about before with Sloaney saying about, you know, how the films are, you know, like you go out and do a shot and the film gets graded. Um, this was very similar in that situation as in the director, George Miller, wanted to see a selection of photos. I said, oh, no problem, but I've been doing this grade. I've been playing around with the colour, but that's only because I can't get through the smoke and the dust and I've had to come up with a recipe to help myself. And then as I was doing it, it turned into, you know, post-apocalyptic world that I was, you know, playing with. And I said, you know, I can turn it all back though. And he goes, no, 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 well, you know, I'd like to have a look because we can't decide on what we want to do. So then, of course, that opened up the next can of worms was that I had to go to the DP and say to him that I'd been messing around with the colour. And so luckily for me, it was a lovely Australian DP called John Searle. And I said to Johnny, oh, um, exactly that story. And he's like, oh, no, no, that's perfect, Jason, because, you know, we can't figure out whether we want to go saturated, unsaturated, whether we want to go um, black and white. Like, okay, no worries. So I did it. Um, where I just wanted to, uh, I call this my yellow cake, right? So I, with the with the world, I wanted to make it like a human. And so I wanted, where I could, I wanted the sky to be grey. I, I used tonal contrast so that, you know, the wrinkles came out um, and, you know, like the earth was dehydrated. And then um, the last part was I put like a, um, a 3% to a 7% straw through it so that it was, to me, it was like um, uranium was the only nutrient left and it was, you know, seeping through the through the soil kind of thing. So luckily for me that they kind of liked it and um, although the film ended up being more saturated in the end, um, nearly everything was uh, taken from what I did and they, you know, they gave me a one-line credit, which was kind of cool and they had like 300 images all through the editing suites so that as everyone came to work in the morning, they'd be, they're inspired. So it was like a bit of a trip. So, wow, um, that's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. It was kind of, it was, it was fun, you know. I mean, I try and do a theme on everything that I do, but, um, but Max was, you know, Fury Road was quite, quite trippy. And, you know, we were war boys, as, as Giles was saying before, you know. It's like there's nothing like being part of it, and you know, and and you too, Helen, with your um, with your battle scenes and stuff. So anyway, and this is uh this is Mulan, and this was actually a scene that the camera was shooting from the other side, but there was this beautiful shot of them looking in each other's eyes as profile, which um, which I don't think we mm -hmm. shot, only I did, and I stood there because it was it was the one shot that I wanted from the day and I was there for like probably an hour, hour and a half just waiting for it and I just totally disregarded everything else, all the scene coverage that was around it and I, I, don't, even, I don't even have an image from it. And, um, and I just went for this because I, it was, you know, the relationship between Mulan and, and her horse um, is legendary and 
that's all I wanted. That just that one shot of them look looking into each other's eyes, and you know, hopefully there'll be lots of kids that have this on their wall one day. Yeah. So it's funny when you really when well. you see us when you see a scene set up and they shoot from one side and then they shoot from the other, but they don't do the side shot. And it's so important for us sometimes that we get the, the I don't know, the the emotion between two characters. I mean, we've got a horse here and we've got the, um, the actress both looking at each other is just it's beautiful. Yes, the relationship. And that's what we're there to capture is the relationship between characters and and um, and draw people in. Is, is that, I'm glad. That, thank you very much for saying that. That it's beautiful because I, I do. I think it's beautiful, and I think it's oh, healthy yeah. for us to to like our own oh, images yeah. and yeah. be in love with our own images. Yeah. And okay. um, and they they change, and it's you know we're there if if it can inspire us. Well, then there's a damn good yeah. chance that it's going to also inspire those people that are looking at it. And you know, I want to go and see this movie. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Absolutely. And then. And this is um from the last bond. Now this is a tricky shot actually. And um it's uh I'm I'm quite known for grabbing a camera and dumping it and running off with a remote control, but I'll also you know run four or five cameras at one time and this scene I didn't. This was at the end of the day and it was an edge arm, you know, Russian arm pulling the the DB5 out. And up until uh, probably 45 seconds before we shot, there was a camera position which I was in. And um, and then all of a sudden they pulled us all out and because it was a little bit sus because they changed the action. It was like coming out of a donut instead of just a straight drive. And so I was like, no way, this is such a rad shot. So I had one of my rigs already set up from a previous shot and I literally just dumped it down next to this um, next to this uh, fruit stall. And I always do manual focus. I set the focus when I'm doing a rig. Um, I don't, you know, leave the camera up to um, choice. You know, that's what I was saying before and about being the boss is like I'll tell it what to do. <laughs> but I had to then find a spot where I could fire it from. And the only place that I could was this church. And it was like – and it was – through these massive metal doors. You know those big metal doors you get on churches? So I had to go behind that with my pocket wizard and I had, I think I had one, I had one relay, but I had no idea whether it was going to work. But out of this sequence, I got like three frames and I really loved this shot because it was just, you know, it was like I literally had 45 seconds to set it up and get out of the way before action was called and, and it kind of worked, you know. Absolutely. That's very, very cool. So cool. And I love that yeah. the flare, the light flare. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> down under the under the yeah. wand of the water. Yeah, I was very lucky. It was a it was, you know, it wasn't a planned shot. It was just a, you know, I might get something out of this. And, you know, instead of walking off and doing it behind the scenes, you know, shove a camera in there and yeah. and try and get Why something. Not? Oh, and then I put this in because this yeah. is me. I was, this is me when I was um, eighty-seven. So what's that? That's I was in my early twenties. So this is in the Philippines in Olo. So I just thought I'd leave you yeah. to, to see what I was, who I was when I was a young mm. PJ. Look at that vest. Wait. Yeah, I know, right? Stylish. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny with my well, Nikon. We, we went here those vests now to take the airplanes i've i've heard that you you know because now we can't travel with such big la uh, luggage you know that trick or you don't well, yeah, I'm I'm to get a jason vest hmm? a jason is that vest. in fact as you as you can't as you have a luggage and you have to have it kind of small with your camera gear you are legally allowed to have a vest like jason's and put all your lenses i mean I, I sometimes just get my camera out of the bag, put it on myself, oh, yeah. and there I can go. And that's legal. So, in oh. fact, now they're selling more and more of those camera photographer vests because you just put all your lenses in there and then you go through with your bag and you're fine. Oh, you load it all up. So. See, I just jump all my gear in the hold. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to know about it. <laughs> 
I, I worked on one film where we had to make a, an exit out the country and uh, I had all my gear with me. So I had to, um, in the queue, they said, he said, oh, you can't take all the equipment overhead. The overhead lockers were sort of packed. So I started handing out all my lenses and camera equipment to everybody. So everybody had oh. a lens in the row. It's just oh. like, it was like, yeah, I'll look after it. Look at that, I'll look at that. And there was like this row of like crew with all my gear. It was like, now can I have it back? I've heard that, <laughs> yeah. I've heard that story. <laughs> Pardon? I've heard that story. Uh, I was told that on set. I'm still waiting for my lenses, okay? They're, still, they're somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> oh in. my gosh, that's hilarious! It was like oh, panic stations, it. and everybody was very helpful. They're very obliging, but uh, yeah, it was a bit embarrassing. Oh, classic. <laughs> I was just going to tell you guys about my vest that I had. Um, I bought it in 1994, I think. And do you guys know the photographer Gilles Perez? He, well, I was doing an independent study with him in New York between college and grad school. And I was headed off to Nepal and Thailand, and he took me to the store to help me buy my first photographer's vest. It was sort of a cool. I still have it. I haven't worn it in a while, though. <laughs> I love it. I've had so many good stories from you guys tonight. I gotta go. Like, oh, thank you so much. It's like, are you away. happy? Cool. It's been fun. I'm very happy. But are you guys? Did you have fun? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. It's so nice because so it's, fun. You know, because you don't. The only other time you get to do it is like, you know, having drinks in a pub. It's like, oh, on your iPhone. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a shot. Oh, yeah, it's like, but like this, you actually get to talk about it. And I um, and and I love it. And, um, oh, Giles, I'm just seeing your your legend photograph over your shoulder there, which I can't believe I didn't notice notice earlier. When, I, when that first came out, man, I was like blown away. It was like, that is such a rad shot. That was. Um... Is that what's that from? That's Fast and Furious Six wow. in Tenerife, and that was a that was a brand new oh, that was a brand new highway that was sort of for us. We had that for two weeks, huh. and um, that was between setups. And I said to Vin, "Can we do some setups here?" The car was just waiting for us, so he was walking backwards and forwards and reeled off a couple of shots. And uh, yeah, they ended up using that as one of the marketing shots as well. So, well shot. But Vin yes. is very helpful. So it, it was it was brilliant. And I've just done Fast and Furious Nine. So uh, that will be out in the cinema at some point. With Steve Linden, oh man, he's great. Yeah, your mate. Yeah, he's awesome. He's good That's fun. Right. Very funny guy. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. We had, there were lots of rigs on yeah. Fast and Furious Six. That's when they really came to their sort of uh, you know I was just using them all the time. The cars were disappearing into the distance for a couple of miles and. Uh, set them up and then just let the camera do its thing and hoped that the camera would come back, which they did. But uh, memory cards filled up. But uh, no, they were brilliant. It worked a treat. I can't wait. I can't wait to see more shots from that, actually. You're all such lovely people. Thank you so much for um, spending your evening with me. That's been fun. Thank you. Afternoon. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody else. Oh, yeah. It was lovely yeah, right? to be with you all. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I'm honored right. to be here chatting with you guys. Um, so do I. I. Yeah. It was we, really we cool. Do and Jason, the <laughs> can we? Yeah. Can can we do a tutorial on how to do a rig as well someday? Yeah. You guys. <laughs> Never done that. <laughs> Sloney and I tried to do that the yeah. other day, but she distracted me with her terminology. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> you have to go back through your um you have to go back through your text messages. No, it's very funny. Yeah, for sure. To, I, I think, you know, um, yeah, I, has I have a question. Great ones too. I have a yeah. question because once I was with my, so I put my, I set my blimp with my pocket wizard or something was working with my pocket wizard. And I, and so I gave that pocket wizard to someone of the crew, like saying, please press on the thing at one point. And then I went somewhere else with my camera, well, the, the one I was taking pictures with. And of course the guy didn't press exactly quite at the right moment. So mm -hmm. how do you do it when you say you set up five cameras with well, five pocket wizards? I, I don't mean, have it here, you... but like, I mean, 
pretend this is a bunk, my pocket wizard. I mean, literally, I'm just like that, and I'll have my thumb and and I'll you know I'll set it off because you can't put them on top because it won't fire off at the right time. But the yeah. thing about with um with the pocket wizards is that you know I, I have seven or I have eight eight and I'll put them on relay and put them all over the place. I'll put them on cars. I'll put them up on the as high as I can. You've got to get them high. And also the RF will, um, the RF from the focus and from the cranes and stuff, that will also stop them from going off. So you need to have as many as you can possibly have to make this big balloon and blanket so that you um, have the best opportunity. Right, right, Giles? I, I I find that um, um, hard cabling is much more reliable. For instance, with the Fast and Furious 6, I had, because the cars were disappearing into the distance, say two, three miles, there was no wireless setup that would work. So it was always on a timer. So you allow for the board to go down and then it would be shooting stills disappearing into the distance. Yes, it would fill up a card, but you would go through and delete the ones that you didn't need and you would guarantee to get a shot because it was constantly Timer. firing. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, I tend not to use wireless. I would cable as majority of the stuff. Um, hmm. I had did one stunt where it just, I had four or five cameras up and only one was working and it was the only one that was cabled. The others were just being knocked out by the pyrotechnics. Because our, our yeah, I've, RF I've... is so small compared to everybody else's. Um, yeah, I've never I had, had that. Mine up, uh, on a crane once, and uh, yeah, it was at that point I was working um, with my iPhone. It wasn't a pocket wizard; it was my iPhone, and so it was on the crane. And mm. at one point, it just left, so I had mm. nothing. And as you were saying earlier, it's up there; you can't get get it down again. So you no, can, once it goes up, and you're in it. the. Yeah, it's in the gods. And but I did get a few trips. shots, but then at one point, look, we're not. Well, I don't have any problem with it when I spread them around. If I'm using, like, if I put them on both sides all over the place, they, yeah, it always they... seems to pick up. And, like, I've set them, I can set them off to, you know, two or 300 metres. But I, I do like the idea of the timer on, um, you know, cars down the track for a mile. Well, it's, really yeah, it's, totally... it's this scenario. That as you were explaining, you know, I, I do that occasionally, but you're like, you're concentrating firing that and then you're firing your remote at the same time with your fingers and you're just like, well, uh, which one, which? At least, you know, you're hard cabled and it's on the timer, it's going click, 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 and it's getting those shots while you're concentrating on something else and not getting mowed down by a car or an aeroplane or whatever. So, uh, yeah, but you're more professional than I. <laughs> Pardon? You're more professional than me. No. I just like wing it, but... <laughs> Now, you live dangerously. You're Mr. Dangerous. You are, yeah, you're oh, close right, to the right. action. We're just wingers. Um, hey, thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. And um, i got to have a pee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Like, yeah. Uh, no, and um, I'll send you, I'll, once I've edited it, I'll put it up. I'll send you guys the link. Only you guys will see the link and go through it. And if there's anything, there's nothing that anyone said that is wrong. But um, I will do an edit anyway if I think, oh, no, it feels a bit uncomfortable. And um, uh, But if there's anything you want me to take out, I can take out. You just send me the send me the numbers and it's all good. And also you need to send me links of anything that you want me to put down, down the bottom, whether it's sponsor that you have or um, just anything. I, I can fill it all up. It makes no difference. Whatever you want to do. Because um, it's about you guys, not about me, and and um, and look after those people around you, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. You are amazing. Really, you. Rolf, you get some sleep, buddy. And thank okay. you so Good much. Night. Good night. Yeah. Good night, Rolf. Bye, Rolf. Good night. Good night. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night. See ya. That was awesome. So, team, um, what did I tell you? What a gang. And uh, Giles, Jessica, Lacey, Helen and Rolf, um, some amazing stories and incredible photographs. And um, i got to say, I love these five photo folios. They just, you know, bring everyone together and it's, it's, uh, it really is rad. So, 
if you could do me a favor and subscribe, that'd be really cool. And do the uh, bell so that you get notified next time we're up. And this is going to be a two-parter. So um, this is uh, probably part two. All right. Cheers. <laughs>